There are a lot of ideas out there, and for the most part, they all fall short. You already know that if you let go of your apple, it will fall toward the ground. We know that gravity is a curvature of space and time, but why and how is it? Why does mass appear to bend the arrow of time? Well, today, we're going to explain the mechanism that produces gravity from energy right here and now. This video has been brought to you in part by our awesome forward-thinking patrons and of course by viewers like you. Thank you. Galileo Galilei showed that all motion is relative and that therefore the laws of motion are the same irregardless of speed or position. As any moving point of view can also be interpreted as a stationary viewpoint. Sir Isaac Newton pondered, postulated, and theorized about gravity. He was, you could say, ahead of the curve. Puns are intended. Now, Albert Einstein, building upon Galileo's work, provided us with some of the first glimpses into the nature of gravity by discovering that space and time are relative, and from this found that gravity is nothing more than a curvature of time relative to space and vice versa. And of course, he too was ahead of the curve. Although he was advanced in his thinking, he still could not identify the exact mechanism by which energy was transformed into gravity producing mass. Sure, Einstein gave us E equals MC squared, showing us that mass and energy are equivalent, but was unable to describe how? Perhaps you're eager to finally know what gravity actually is. But who are we kidding? Of course you are. That's why you are here. Our work here does not stand in isolation, but stands on the shoulders of those before and around us. And with that, here we go. Let's tell you what gravity actually is. We already know that there's a difference in time between the surface of a planet and the surrounding space. In fact, all GPS satellites must make the necessary corrections for this time difference. Otherwise, your GPS unit would eventually send you to China or Africa at the next right turn. As Einstein has proved, Gravity equates to a curvature of space-time, and as Gravity Probe B has indicated, mass does drag space-time around. But what is this curvature exactly? What is curving, and why is it curving? To start with, you need to understand what the fabric of the universe actually is. The fabric of the universe is a superfluid of time, specifically, a superfluid consisting of time quanta amongst other particles. In order to understand this better, let's examine the 3D model on your screen right now. Imagine for a moment that each point on the grid represents a single quantum of time and space, where the different colors, from blue down to red, represents a decreasing rate of time, red being the slowest. Time quanta have both an associated wavelength and frequency. Whilst the wavelength is fixed, the frequency is not. Therefore, any reduction in frequency corresponds to a slowing of time. Yes, the changing of frequency changes time. We already know that energy curves spacetime and that mass and energy are equivalent. Therefore, as we slowly begin introducing a mass of positive energy, such as a planet, the quanta of time begins slowing, effectively shrinking time and with this also space. 
But the fabric of the universe, the time superfluid, cannot be compressed nor expanded. What appears to be shrinkage is, in fact, a curvature through time. Is this not what Einstein already described? Well, yes and no. Einstein's fabric is not quantized, nor is the fabric underlying quantum mechanics. The key in realizing the ultimate fabric of the universe is a quantized fabric of time particles. Realizing this not only allows us to explain the mechanism for energy transforming into mass, but it also provides a, a natural and inherent explanation for quantum weirdness. Bizarre phenomena such as quantum non-locality or indeterminacy make logical sense if the universe has a finite frame rate. All matter is made up of time quanta, slowed, mixed with other energies, and compressed into a dense ball. You see, mass does not bend the arrow of time. Rather, mass creates the arrow of time. A time quantum is an interactive particle in its own right, and it is via this interaction that particles of matter grab a hold of and slow the flow of time, creating a temporal time gradient that in turn gives rise to what we call gravity. Of course, our theory includes an explanation of gravitation, of how exactly a quantum time permits energy to become gravity-producing mass, something that requires a much more extensive discussion. That said, we are in the process of creating a video for just this purpose, a video about the fundamental nature of the universe a grand unified field theory. Yes, we know it's a big claim, but it's one we can back up. The video is coming soon. Now, let's provide you with an extremely simplified version of what I just said above. The slowing of time curves space, producing a force we call gravity. Of course, you know that with this understanding, we will be able to engineer, control, and produce both gravity and anti-gravity. So there you go. This is the mechanism for gravity. I want to thank you for watching. Until next time, keep wondering about space.